Okay, so my name is Alphonse O'Brien, and um, I think my bio is just filled with second generation libertarian references, because my parents were, uh, were libertarian as well. And um, so I've been talking about libertarian concepts with other people for a long time. You know, since I was six years old, and running around with my mother talking about, you know, I just want to be free, right? And I didn't really understand why other people wouldn't want the same things that I wanted. You know, when I talk to people about libertarianism, I'm like, well, don't you want to be free to do whatever you want to do with your life? And was that a raising your hand for question? I'm saying yes. Okay, good. <laughs> All right, just making sure. I, I like to get a, I'm getting interactive on this. But the fact is, you know, as a child, I didn't understand why libertarian ideas wouldn't be popular. They, they seem like they would be. You want the freedom to do with your body and your mind what you want, um, to keep your money, to love whomever you wish, to put whatever you want into your body, etc. So it was, a, it was a weird experience as a libertarian child to realize that these ideas weren't popular. And so I had to talk to non-libertarians and try to understand why they didn't like what I was talking about. And the learned was that sometimes it's the people telling them about libertarianism and about liberty that kind of turn them off from it for various reasons. So um, I've done, I actually have a YouTube video that maybe some of you have seen, that's uh, how to communicate libertarian ideas effectively. And in it, I use a, uh, a debate tactic called the Ransberger Pivot. Has anyone here heard of the Ransberger Pivot? Yay! Oh my goodness. The, not very common people have. So I'm going to go into it for those of you who don't know. The Ransberger Pivot was meant in the early 80s by Ray Ransberger and Marshall Fred. Marshall Fritz is known as uh, one of the founders of the Advocates for Self Government. And um, it basically came up with this debate tactic that is three steps. I'm going to like, elaborate on them. The three steps is to listen, to understand, and to find common ground and work people towards that common ground with your argument. So, the first one. This is actually how to talk about liberty. I'm going to sum it up in one word: listen to people. Because if you don't understand where people are, you don't understand where they're coming from, you can't get to them. Like if they're over there and you're over here, you can't. You can't just be like, "Hey, get over here, so I can talk to you." You have to go over to where they are, figure out what they value, what they want, and you have to lead them on the path. And a lot of people miss that. And a lot of people, you know, listen to people. I mean, you can listen to them, you know, sit down and ask what they value. Of course, the, the way that you get into talking about liberty in the first place is because you get into a debate where someone's asserting an idea, right? Someone's saying, government needs to pay for health care or whatever, whatever they are asserting. And you need to start with listening to what they're asking for. And then you need to understand why they're asking. You know, people dying because they don't have health care. 
but one person has to use force to fund the system that people fall through the cracks of all the time. And what we want to do is open up the market. We want to create competitive solutions. We want to end regulations that say they can't sell healthcare over, over state lines, health insurance over state lines. There's so many things that we can <coughs> tell them that they don't realize are in the way that the state, that they're saying, the state will solve this, the state will help grandma. No, the state's hurting grandma. The state is not <coughs> allowing the solutions that can make healthcare affordable for everyone. The state isn't allowing the solutions that can actually get everyone over. And that's the struggle we have, is that, is that a lot of times we move into the abstract concept of force, we move into the abstract concept of, of, um, of you know, you want the government to take my money and pay for something. But the truth is, they just want grandma to have health care. And so when you can tell them, this is how we can have, that we have this is how we can have nice things. I, I believe in the nice things too. And I want everyone to have them. And this is my solution of how to do it. Actually, create that conversation where you come on the same side. Where you say, "Hey, we're buddies together. And we're trying to get grandma healthcare." When we're able to do that, when we're able to link arms with them in a common cause, and then bring them to a new solution, that is how we're going to get people interested in liberty. And 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 sometimes, just for the record, sometimes they're not going to adopt this the whole philosophy. Maybe you're just going to change their mind on a particular subject, whether it's healthcare, whether it's drugs, whether it's taxes, whatever the topic is, you might not win them over on the overreaching concept of liberty all the time. But it's a long conversation, you know? It's a long period of time in which you're going to put an idea in their head and it's going to create doubts about the system that they believe in that will fix things. And once they have one doubt, more doubts can follow. You've opened up, you've opened up the space for them to be able to doubt. So that's the rhyme's word of it. Any questions about the rhyme's word of so far? What's up, Rich? So, um, in some, a lot of some similar to some of the training. That is how to speak. It sounds like is the pivot meant to, the pivot, is the pivot meant more to be the opening so they'll take that first step, or is the pivot meant more to, to actually <laughs> bring them to just get that first step? So, the pivot is, I mean, the pivot is the fact that when you start that conversation, you're on opposite sides, right? I think that there should be free market health care. I think that we should have universal health care, right? Those are the two opposing sides, the budding hats, right? And what you do in our answer pivot is you listen, you understand, and so you move closer to them. And one of the things is they start to think, oh, I'm convincing them. Like, that's something that's happening for them, is that they're giving you their argument, and you're listening to it, you're listening to it, and, and you're moving closer to them. And so they think, Hey, great, I'm convincing this libertarian that we should have universal health care, right? And it's like, it's a little, it's a little sneaky that. But what happens is your budding heads, you're against each other. And then you are talking to them and you are moving closer to where they are. And they're listening because you're listening to them. And then you, you pivot it and so you're next to each other. And then you're holding hands in a like in a cause, in a common cause. And that's that pivot. That's the pivot of like, now we're on the same side. And now we have a and now I'm going to explain a different solution of how to get what you said you want. We're now going in the same direction in terms of what we want. We've, we've articulated that we want the same thing. We're able to understand that common ground. We want the same thing we want in completely different ways. And that's okay. You put it, you put it so that it's actually there's a great quote by Jeff Weiss, where he explains that ideas flow between friends, not between enemies. If you are in a conflict with someone, you don't want to listen to what they have to say. Like if somebody tells me, like if somebody's like, you know, diametrically opposed to me in some way, we have a debate, I don't want to, I don't want to like open my mind to what they are thinking about. You know, nobody does. It's a defense mechanism in general. We think, no, you want to attack who I am. And so we start to defend ourselves. We start to become defensive and we make arguments against whatever someone's proposing because we think on different sides. And so if you put yourself on the same side as someone by finding the common thing that you can both be on the same side of, then it's, then it becomes friends. It becomes friends who care about, you know, the incarceration rate of black men in this country. 
You know, suddenly it becomes about how we fix that. The drug laws. Like that, there's a conversation where you can start to bring someone in and say, and, and hell, like the, the incarceration of, of black men in this country is a huge one for liberals and drugs, right? Like that's a way to get liberals in um, to, to talk about the drug war, right? But on the flip side of that, when you talk about conservatives and broken families and fathers not being there for their kids, that goes into the incarceration rate. That goes into if the drug laws were changed, then we would have less broken families. And that's something that conservatives want. So you find the thing that you have to have a conversation with people. And the other thing you have to do is you have to recognize that everyone's an individual, and I know that sounds weird to have to remind you of. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true because I, I don't know how many times I see someone go, oh, those status, can't get through to them. Oh, well, women just want protection. <laughs> like, whatever the thing is, you said, like, people suddenly, to, in order to simplify their lives, they put people into groups, which, you know, we're going to do naturally, but, but people stop treating people like individuals. And when that happens, you stop having conversations with them as if they're individuals. And when you stop having conversations with them as if they're individuals, you stop bringing, you stop allowing yourself to hold their hand because you're busy putting them in a box. So that's that. Questions so far? See, I can talk really fast and then I can go <laughs> out. <laughs> you're you're going to be on the next panel anyway. I know. With Wendy and Ms. Tang, Tang Wayne was going to jump awesome. on in there. It's Perfect. Perfect. Uh, Tang Man is a war player. Unbelievable. <laughs> you know, so I didn't speak yesterday. Great. Yes. Um, hey, Boomer. I was in the front row just a heck of you. You missed all the best stuff, man. Yeah, seriously. Like, you, you were, I mean, we talked about the record. We'll though. start over. Yeah, we'll start yeah. over. So oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so the lessons get really, like, you know, like, slow. Like, slow. Like, 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 all these different people, you know, people need to recognize they don't have to be the person to talk to that person. Yeah. And just, you know, let him go, and someone else will could be that person that needs to talk to him. You don't have to be the person that converts. Yeah. It takes 11 touches on an average for somebody introduced to a new concept to become a to become to that guy. Exactly. Well, I don't yeah. think you really can think of converting people. It has to be an epiphany. Yeah. We all came to liberty to an epiphany. Yeah. You can't drag someone to an epiphany. It, it, it's, 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 yeah, sometimes it's trickles. And the fact is, you know, some people, some people all it takes is that they, they grasp the concept and they, they grasp the idea that we, we can't, like, the Christianism, what I consider it to be, is it's a moral philosophy about force. It's a moral philosophy about the idea that we can't force people to do things, right? We can't, we can't impose upon the life and liberty of someone else. We don't want people to impose on the life and liberty of us. And we can't do it to someone else. And I always say that everyone wants to be free. They just want to be free about certain things. So you talk to a Democrat, and they say, I want to be free to have an abortion to control my reproductive life, or I want to be free to. Democrats are not as friendly on drugs as they think they are. <laughs> like, I wish they were more friendly on drugs. Like, the Democrats are not as anti war as they think. Driving the absolute mad because until they score, they acted like they were. But the fact is, I just can't it. Um, the, the fact is that, um, that everybody has to be one thing for you to do, whether it's smoke pot, whether it's have an abortion, whether it's keep more of their own damn or hard earned money. And you have to, the moment that libertarianism happens is the moment that they realize that other people should have that freedom too. And they're able to apply that one freedom that they want to other freedoms that they want. They have to say, you know what? I really want the right to an abortion, but I also really want to keep my hard earned tax dollars so that I can afford a kid when I want one. Like, these are the kinds of things that you have to do. You can slowly get people to pick up, and once, once they realize, oh, I want this for everyone, because I have no right to tell someone else they can't have that's the that's the little clip. I've been saying that a lot when I got social media. I think I like it. I think that's I think that's where I'm sticking with that. Um, but that is that is the key. Is that sometimes it's going to take more than one conversation, and 
sometimes you're not the right person to talk to somebody, and that's okay, which is why, that is just why we should spend more time being cool with other kinds of libertarians. And I mean, it's genuinely, is it? I think the left-right paradigm, including the left-right paradigm that exists with libertarians, I think it's the stupidest thing ever, because the idea that in libertarianism is we're libertarian, we don't, we don't have this left and right crap. We're, we are libertarians, we want everyone to be free. But there are people who consider themselves left libertarians, there are people who consider themselves right libertarians, and there are people who use either of those terms as, as derogatives against other people within the libertarian movement. I even call the left libertarian more times than I can count. And I don't understand why, because I'm the biggest capitalist crazy person I've ever met. Like, I am like, free market, yeah, capitalism, yeah. Like, how can you call me a leftist? But. Walt Block talks about it. We had a pleasure of being in Walt Block, which you can tell me. You know, Walt is a conventional way to eat. But Walt has said it's not just, you know, it's not about right paradigm. Think of it like a school. <laughs> it is the other leg of the school. Yeah. Really good school. Yeah. The fact is, that, yeah, it's, it's libertarianism is something else than left and right. But the fact is, people factionalize. And so people become the radical people or the left, people or the right. There are the feminist libertarians, there are the definitely not feminist libertarians. There are all sorts of groups. And the fact is, that's okay because you're going to talk to different people. I cannot talk to someone who listens to Alice Jones every day. That's fine. That's totally fine. It's good. And um, actually, Good example. Joe Weiss and I are like best friends. Like he's one of my dearest, dearest people in my life. He cannot talk to feminists. He shouldn't talk to feminists. He should, the minute he gets into a conversation with a feminist, he should stop. <laughs> and, and you know what? Austin Peterson, not so good at talking to feminists. But guess what they do? Both of them go, you know what? Maybe you should talk to Alphonse O'Brien. You should check out Alphonse O'Brien. She has some things to talk about when it comes to women's liberty. And so they like, they say, oh, she's and so they come to me and they go, oh, but you're a feminist and not a libertarian for evil, right? Because that's what they're thinking in their heads. And I come to them and I go, yeah, yep, I'm a feminist. You know who the biggest, who the biggest oppressor of women is? Government. <laughs> and they and they flip around. They're like, what? But 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 government was good in this. No, 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 no. The biggest oppressor of women is, is is government. And it takes that, it takes me being able to say that instead of Judge White trying to explain that to someone or also here's a What's up, Rich? So you sort of hit on two things there. The, a lot of libertarians, and we've all been close to this, is you, you make the, you're essentially telling someone their assumptions are wrong by offering counter information. And a lot of people have kind of got this, that, you know, people stumble across the truth and just pick themselves up and force themselves up and people like that happen. But, so you're giving this counter information, but it can be hard, it can be hard you know, that there's that presentation that you look at in the way that we'll start accepting yeah. it. And Medicine is hard to swallow, but right. it happens. And the second part you mentioned about how sometimes you need to have, if you're not part of a community or, or an identity, or you find that it can be hard for someone from outside that to, 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 like, it's, it's obviously a lot easier for you to talk to another woman and talk about government oppression of women versus a man and saying it in general terms. Yeah, absolutely. So, so how much, is obviously you can, two people can use the exact same language. Yeah. But the receiver is going to interpret it very clearly. Absolutely, absolutely. I thought I thought it's on a hand up. Yeah. Um, at the beginning of your talk, you were asking, you know, why wouldn't people want to have liberty? Right. Right? right. And I think it is that people want to have their own liberty, mm -hmm. but they don't want other people to have liberty to do things that they Stop don't agree. Stop liking what I don't like. That's what it comes down to. <laughs> Stop liking what I don't like. Yes. And. Um, And 
seeds of doubt are really powerful. Because you get some God. It's okay too, also. Like you need somebody and you're not quite clicking or whatever. And it's okay to say, you know what? Or whatever. So the verse, do the takeaway. Just say, you know, you act like you're not interested. And they're like, what? And the next person, I'm going to sign up or register or do whatever with that person to show that person, you know? Yeah. You know it's like, yeah. Something more powerful than see the doubt. It's true. It's true. And I think that both are really useful. Because the fact is, you have to get them to doubt what they believe already. You have to get them to doubt that the state is the best source for something. Actually, um, as I was getting, I was going to pack them this morning. I was talking to uh, one of the uh, one of the people that I was rooming with, and he said that the other day um, some girl came up to him and was like, "Well, how's the liberty going to save the dolphins?" And he was like, <laughs> "I was like, I think there are other priorities out there." But the thing is, you don't want to go to your priorities are wrong. Right? When are you going to start listening to me then? I'm going to tell you your priorities are wrong, and you're going to be like, "Well, then, okay, you suck," and then the conversation's over, right? What was the answer? So he had no. He's like, what he said to her was, "I think they're priority wrong. You have so, an idea. Yeah. How do we save the dolphins?" Yeah, uh, the free market. Someone came up with dolphin safe tuna, and people bought it. Exactly. And the free market solved this issue. So and there were two things I said, is that especially with like environmental causes or things like that. The fact is, blackfish may have got people to stop going to Sea World and see, and, and now they're not going to have orcas there. It was a movie. It was a movie that created people, and that's how many people said, I don't want to support this anymore, I'm not putting my dollars to this place anymore, get your orcas out, like, and that's not helpful. But the fact is that this, these are these things, the free market, dolphin safe tuna, the fact that, um, the fact that we've seen outrage, we've seen things change because people spoke up and said, I'm not giving my dollars to that organization or that, uh, or that, uh, that thing anymore. Mr. Aaron, flag him back. Um, this, you said something there, and, and I, I, I jump, jump in there. That I, I think everybody in the room recognizes the mistake that was made, but I think we need to make sure that we put it. Never tell somebody that their priorities are out of order or that they are wrong. Well, That's not planning a seed. Exactly. Right. You did. You did recognize you didn't have the answer. I'm just saying. I just want to. Yeah. Make, if saying. you don't have the answer, it's okay to say I don't have the answer, but never insult the person because they're guaranteed they're never going to yeah. find a way. I mean, as soon as you insult someone, they don't want to listen to you, and if you can't get them to listen to you, you can't teach them anything. Yeah, I, I, I deal with a lot of uh, social conservative. I also have a wide variety of points, but I also deal with a lot of hardcore uh, socialists and Marxists, and the only thing.
one, that's two. But two, these individuals and human beings, too, and a lot of them are philosophic, and lots of them are, are not. But the fact is, when you start to recognize the humanity of another person, you start to recognize the humanity of a woman who really, really, like, who really feels that she cannot take care of a child and needs to have a portion of you. When you start to recognize the humanity of a Christian who really, really, really doesn't want, you know, what, whatever the government's trying to impose in terms of religious, not, not having religious liberty, et cetera. Whatever these things are that people hold close to them, like, they need to be able to, to you need to be able to recognize their humanity. And one of the biggest things in this case is war. The fact that when people support war, you have to dehumanize other human beings in order to support war. You have to go, oh, there's a bunch of people over there in that other country. They're called Syrians. They're called Iraqis. Called, you know, because of whatever whatever the group is, they become less human. They become less, they become a, 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 an abstract concept. You go, well, we got we got a bomb them in order to like you know have security or whatever. Well, you, what you do in peace, and what you've done is you've dehumanized these people. You made it so they're not human beings anymore in your eyes. And once you recognize this as a human being, it's a whole lot harder. It's it's really hard to actually hit another human being. Have you ever realized that like like I've been mad about something? especially on the internet, I'm like, love to question the thing. When I'm in person with them, I don't have a desire to question the thing. Probably it's because I'm about 100 pounds and I would not be able to actually create any impact on their face. <laughs> but, but the fact is, it's not fun to punch anyone. Has anyone ever actually punched someone like a bar fight or a brawl or anybody? Okay, but it's not, it's like, okay, wait. Okay. It's fun. Oh, fun. I mean, like, that's stupid that you believe in that thing. But you know what? Go have at 
to enjoy. Join your church and your church with the donations and, and charity. You know, it's beautiful. It's wonderful. That's voluntary action in which people are trying to make a better life for themselves and for others. Even if I don't believe in the, the, the part with God or whatever, I don't care because the key is people should have the right to associate it, associate it and associate as they wish and to be able to create these other solutions to government. The fact that, you know, there are poor people and there are people that need help and there are solutions for that. Uh, I'm sure you don't need to hear this, but I think a lot about self-sovereignty and how one's beliefs and how they're irrational they are, like the poor part of self-sovereignty. We have no right to rule on things. It's true, it's true. It's, it's about, that's, that, that is an essential, is that what people believe is part of what they are. And that's one of the reasons that in the Ranford, uh, you acknowledge what people believe, is that you also have to realize that when you attack someone from their belief, when you tell them they have some other priority, when you tell them that something they believe is wrong, what they usually, to be perfectly honest, as much as we like to give, like, craft the status of that is, they don't, it's not usually that they believe in the state, it's that they believe in something that they the state brings about, right? They believe in healthcare for grandma, they believe in a safer society, and they think the government is the place to do it. So you have to do is you don't want to attack that belief, that really well-meaning, good-hearted belief that they want something done, they want something, they want, you know, my grandma to be taken care of, whatever it is. If you have to attack the, the, the mechanism. But the value, if you attack the value, People who people are defined by their values, what they care about, what they want, they define themselves by that. And if you if you attack that, you're attacking them, and then they close themselves off for you. And so that that yes, exactly. I'd like to ask the people who explain something to understand better. Federal government. Or PMI, apparently, but yeah. So that was a real case. 
spring of the conversation. Awesome. <laughs> I, I think that's another thing, too, is when it comes to the federal government, most Americans realize that the federal government doesn't give a shit about it. Most Americans realize that they're not really part of that system, that that's a bunch of old people in Washington who are making a bunch of laws that don't really, like, that, yes, they touch us, but they don't, they're not, they're not listening to our concerns. So you can send the letter to your senator or congressman and you get a long letter back. But the fact is, like, most people realize that the government's kind of indifferent to them. And so sometimes when you're able to have a conversation, unfortunately there are a lot of people that think, oh, we just need to get more involved in the government and, like, and then, and then get it to care about the right things. And so there's a struggle there. Hey, 
have Democrats in, in the list, you have Republicans. And I think you have a lot of libertarians in there that just don't know they want. So they, that's another place you have to leverage, gun shows and whatnot. I have to try to force my party to get outside of our little like, little, like uh, vacuum and get out there. Talking to non-libertarians, very important. And, and, and to his point, yeah. not just necessarily going out to groups of people, but maybe working in your community, working with your community, uh, your organizations that you already belong to, just yeah. talking to people, leading your life like a libertarian, leading by example. Yeah. A lot of those things are like, well, why did you do that? Well, because I believe this. You know, that, that helps you speak about it. Your life experiences help you speak about liberty. Why, why do you believe this? Well, because this happened. Or because I lived here in this community and I saw this happening. Yeah. So don't just talk about it because some people are like, okay, you're just talking about it and it's my idea. Yeah. But if they actually see it working. Absolutely. I saw one more hand up. Um, keep your back Think of, especially the big dark community people, you know, the greenies and you know, the whole fruit type people that are so especially here. When you see a news story that's like, wow, big government's really ripping out. I'm from Pennsylvania. You can sell raw milk inside the state border, but if you get caught selling raw milk across the border, you don't have much fun with it. It's degraded, you know. And this is the problem. Why do you think that? This is voluntary transactions. People want the raw milk. You were selling raw milk, we're not mislabeling you the milk. And so you want, yes, here's cash and change. Government should have no business. Why are taxpayers, anyway, I keep stuff like that for almost every conference that's going to hit you with, especially from the left. The government is left, the government is member. And they say, why would we pay taxes for our members? What do you think of that? So we're totally missing. He said, well, that's where it gets us involved. 